India saw an unprecedented growth in the number of crypto investors as Bitcoin skyrocketed to an all-time high of about $67,000 last September before falling. On February 1st, the union budget introduced a special provision to tax profits from cryptocurrency investing, removing any ambiguity on how such gains must be treated. The government for the first time defined virtual digital assets, which includes cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens or NFTs. The broad definition of virtual digital asset could also mean more than just cryptocurrencies and NFTs. From April 1st, a flat 30% tax will be applicable on profits from the transfer of crypto assets, irrespective of the holding period. At that tax rate, crypto gains are treated the same way winnings from gambling, lottery or horse trading are treated. Not just this, to track the money trail, a 1% TDS on payments made for transferring digital assets will be levied above a specified monetary threshold from July 1st. Importantly, losses cannot be set off against any other income. Tax expert Nishan Shah explained how the provisions work. What the provision says is that when there is a transfer of this virtual digital asset and the amount which is earned, the profit will be taxable to 30%. But here she has said that there will be no expenses allowed to be deducted. And therefore, whatever is the cost of the virtual asset of acquisition of that will only be allowed to be reduced to arrive at the uh, uh, profit which is generated. So it is said that when somebody procures a virtual digital asset, uh, whoever pays the money, that person will have to deduct 1% as the withholding tax or the tax deductible at source while paying the amount. So again, there are certain conditions they put that if the total quantum is above 50,000 in a year, only then the TDS will apply or per transaction, it's more than 10,000, only then the TDS. So they should have brought out specific provisions to regulate these exchanges. The exchange is only an intermediary between the buyer and the seller. So the exchange may undertake the TDS, but on behalf of the buyer. But suppose if there is the same individual or the same assessee who's carrying out multiple transactions, the exchange may accumulate all of the transactions carried out during the day and then carry out a 1% withholding or the TDS from the whole bunch of transactions. You know, one thing is clear, the fact that they've brought out these provisions uh, in a way, does away with uh, this concept that whether trading in cryptocurrency itself is illegal. Experts say that losses arising from crypto trading can be set off against crypto gains in the same financial year. While crypto trading is not illegal, the government has made it clear that it does not want to encourage it either. Sita Raman has even said the government taxing income from digital assets does not grant them legitimacy. At least not yet, as the government is working on a separate legislation for regulation. Nonetheless, cryptocurrencies have emerged as an asset class that many are including in their overall portfolios. For example, investment platform Mudrex offers investors theme-based crypto baskets that can minimize risk. It is attracting long-term investors by simplifying crypto investment. Mudrex founder Edul Patil told Business Standard how Indians are embracing crypto as an investment product. When crypto first started, like any other asset class, it started with traders. And now what started to happen over time is that the trader community, although is growing, but the retail investor community is growing much faster. Most retail investors, what they're looking for is a simple, easy to understand way to invest. We've seen in the past simple products like mutual funds, index funds, or for that matter, products like small cases now have done really good on that front to simplify the investing process for uh, investors. And that's where Mudrex comes in. The benefit of crypto is that at a micro level, like on a day-to-day, week-to-week and so on and so forth, month-to-month level, they have diverged or have started to become very, very uncorrelated. The micro level uncorrelation is actually what helps you create diversified gains. Let's say stocks might fall, but Bitcoin won't. Or Bitcoin might fall, but DeFi products won't. Crypto is still a riskier asset class. And diversification does not mean you put in 40% of your net worth in crypto. Diversification means that you then adjust it to maybe 5 to 8% based on the risk profile that you have. What we are saying is that what you need to do is you need to invest systematically, invest for the long run and invest in world recognized and time tested methods, which are diversifying in baskets, doing regular SIP style investments and growing that wealth in the longer run. There is a very, very strong undercurrent uh, amongst everyone uh, who want to participate but they are waiting for clarity around two fronts. One is taxation and the other is classification of the asset class on a regulatory perspective. I genuinely do believe as soon as any clear, any clarity in regulations comes in, there will be a huge wave of, 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 you know, just users wanting to jump into crypto. 
Although investors believe taxation has given the much needed legal acceptance for cryptocurrencies, the TDS provision is being seen as a big disincentive to trading. Naimish Sangvi of CoinCrunch India explains the impact of this provision on Indian crypto trading ecosystem. The complications that this thing creates are large. If on an exchange, I am going to place a buy order, but multiple sellers are going to, uh, you know, match with that buy order. And I will not know who the seller is, uh, right? So how do we deal with that situation? Perhaps an Indian exchange would be, uh, you know, responsible to pay the TDS instead of you yourself. But then it raises the question as to what happens to the trades that you do uh, on international exchanges or uh, on exchanges where the person on the other side is not an Indian resident. Uh, many people in the Indian market actually uh, bring in the volumes by becoming one of the three things. Either they are market makers, uh, which means that they are they have given liquidity to the exchange and they're continuously trading, or they are arbitragers who are just buying on one exchange and selling on another for a very minuscule profit of one, two, maybe 5%. And then the third ones are day traders. All of these people, if they start paying or if they start getting 1% less on their capital, uh, uh, what it leads to is erosion of the capital. You will you start with 1 lakh in 300 sales, you will be left with 4,000 rupees. So I think what will happen now is all the market making or the arbitrage, all the trading will stop. As such, the volume on all the exchanges should die down very quickly. Uh, and uh, we might not even see competition pricing against the international market. This is my opinion on what will happen with TDS. Complications arise even with peer-to-peer -peer transactions that happen outside of an exchange. The buyer of the cryptocurrency would have to collect the seller's SPAN number and go through a conversion process to deposit the TDS. How many would follow this rule and how the government will enforce compliance is not known yet. We now understand that the budget provisions heavily discourage day-to-day -day transactions and trading. In the absence of an overarching legislation to regulate cryptocurrencies that addresses tax concerns at different points of the cryptocurrency trading chain and cross-border transfers, several questions still remain unanswered. Meanwhile, the industry is seeing the tax proposal as the first step towards full-fledged regulation of the sector. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.